that kind of quality doesn't usually land on my uh, on my desk. You know, normally people want me to bang someone around the head, drive a car, and shoot a gun, and they're very happy. So um, this has, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of content. It's a much deeper and richer story with, you know, great characters, and you know, it takes takes me places that you know that I don't normally go. If you're a fan of Jason Statham or you have watched my previous videos on him, you know that he's known for pretty much only one genre, action. For better or for worse, most of his movies are action movies, and he's been in a lot of them. So far I've only talked about a few on this channel, but we've really barely scratched the surface of his extensive filmography. However, despite being a pretty great action star that does all of his own stunts, he's often overlooked when discussing action movie greats. When talking about the best action stars working today, many people will mention Tom Cruise, Keanu Reeves, or even Dwayne The Rock Johnson, but rarely do you ever see Statham's name get any recognition. His lack of a glowing reputation despite his dedication to the genre is mostly due to the movies he plays in. By now, even if you're unfamiliar with most of his movies, if you've watched my channel, you probably have a good idea of the kind of action movies he tends to play in. Bad ones. And I hate to say that because I love Jason Satham, but it's just the truth. Even the Satham movies that I personally love the most fall apart under critical scrutiny. And as you might expect, they aren't very critically acclaimed. While the Mission Impossible and John Wick franchises are flying high with commercial and critical success, Jason Statham hasn't been the lead in a successful franchise since The Transporter. And that series isn't exactly critically acclaimed action. Now imagine being Statham in this situation. You work your ass off doing what you love, playing in bad action movies and portraying shallow characters just to get by. Meanwhile, your peers are playing in much more successful action movies. I can only imagine it's a huge blow to your self-esteem. In my opinion, Statham is the underdog of the action genre, just waiting for his moment to break through the ice and claim the legendary status that he deserves. Then one movie came along and promised Statham a unique opportunity. Hummingbird. Hummingbird, or Redemption as it's known in the US for some reason, is directed by Stephen Knight, who you may know for directing the Tom Hardy drama Locke. Statham was offered the lead role in this action drama, and the enthusiasm in his interviews speaks for itself. It was a, a tremendous sort of part for me if I could ever, you know, ever get something like that come my way. It was just like, you know, it's just an un unbelievable moment that I was going to get to do the film. So I was, I was really, I was really happy. Finally, here is a movie that gives Statham the opportunity to redeem himself from his past of bad action movies. Now he could play a character with real emotional depth in a story that's meant to be taken seriously. He had a chance to prove himself as an actor and give himself a new reputation among critics and audiences. With all of that in mind, Hummingbird was a huge letdown. It got mixed critical reviews, and it's pretty easy to see why. It follows an ex-special ops homeless man through a messy, self-serious story full of contradicting tones. I'm not going to try to give a plot synopsis here because I literally can't understand what this movie was trying to go for in its story. It wants to be a character-driven drama, a thrilling action movie, and a heartwarming love story all at once. And it doesn't work because all of these clashing tones work against each other. The story wants to be taken seriously, but that's kind of hard to do when you have an action scene where Statham threatens somebody with a spoon. You got a knife. I got a spoon. The action is shot and executed well enough, even though the choreography leaves something to be desired, but the spectacle of it is undercut when you have unnecessary emotional music playing over the fight as if it's supposed to mean something to the audience. Despite the movie looking pretty good visually, it gets pretty disappointing early on. I was really excited to see Jason Statham play a homeless man with long scraggly hair, but within the first 10 minutes he shaves his head and stumbles into an abandoned apartment where he lives for almost a year until the owner comes back. This movie is supposed to be about Statham's character getting his life together, but all of the drama involved in that process happens off screen. He doesn't struggle to get a place to live, he just happens upon one, and a time jump happens where he already has a job. The movie wants us to be emotionally connected to this character, but that's pretty hard to do when we don't see him struggle with anything. We're just told he's struggling because of the melodramatic tone of the movie. 
We do see him struggle with PTSD, but the scenes are poorly executed with strange editing and directing choices. He stumbles around the street drunk, and when someone shoves into him on the street, he has Vietnam-style flashbacks to completely unrelated events. In most movies, you can understand why a certain sound, image, or sensation would trigger an emotional flashback, but this guy just goes nuts if you just fucking touch him. The whole sequence just feels really forced. There is a pretty creative scene where he hallucinates hummingbirds in his room and then a body drops down from the ceiling and he starts shooting it, but it doesn't really make us sympathize with him as a character. 30 minutes into the movie, Statham decides he just wants to start working for the Chinese mob, so he starts driving the mob boss around and doing his dirty work. It tries to paint what he's doing as noble because he gives all of his money to a nun who runs a homeless kitchen, but it also leads to a ridiculous scene where he finds his former girlfriend in a store. As soon as she sees him, she just starts yelling about how she has to give blowjobs for money and starts throwing canned goods at him. It's supposed to be emotionally significant, but we're a good way through this movie and it just introduces this character out of nowhere. Before this scene, I didn't even know he had a family. Watching the scene just made me think that it, maybe I had missed a line of dialogue somewhere where he mentioned his family. It was really confusing. Speaking of character introductions, there's this homeless girl that you see getting attacked at the beginning of the movie that Statham helps. She doesn't appear after the opening, and halfway through the movie, it's revealed that she was killed by someone in the mob. Again, this is supposed to be an emotional scene, but at this point, I had totally forgotten who the character even was. I literally had to rack my brain for a couple of minutes to even remember when she was in the movie. We're given no time to know this character that we're supposed to be emotionally invested in. She's just introduced and thrown away like it means nothing. So he starts working with his friend the nun to find out who killed her, but that plot line is almost entirely dropped in favor of a romance. The first time these two characters meet up to discuss the murder, they just end up getting drunk and talking about their feelings instead, which leads them to kissing each other. From this point on, the revenge plot line just randomly appears and goes away when the film needs it to. And at this point in the movie, it has completely dropped his struggle with PTSD. By the end of the movie, it turns into a total dumpster fire because it has to tie up all of the loose ends in the plot, which is a lot because this movie introduces and drops a lot of stuff. This wrap-up leads to some of the worst scenes in the movie. The writing in these scenes is extremely lazy. In the scene that ties off the revenge plot, he's at a rooftop party and just so happens to see the guy who killed his friend, so he pushes him off a roof. It's an awful scene because there was no dramatic payoff. It wasn't satisfying in any way. If you haven't noticed already, I've been avoiding talking about Satham's performance in this movie so far. And that's because I really like him and I really want to be nice, but damn is his acting not good in this movie. In most scenes he's not horrible, but his acting is just a little too stiff to be effective. Unsurprisingly, he does his best performance during the fight scenes or any scenes having to do with the mob. But in the final scenes of the movie, his acting is pretty awful. He goes to visit his young daughter, and it's supposed to be a really tear-jerking scene, but the way he delivers his line, it's like he's not even trying. Let's just hold your hand for a minute. After that, it tries to tie up the PTSD angle by having him explain to the nun about his experience in Afghanistan. This leads to a long close-up shot of Statham trying really hard to cry, and it is just not convincing. At the end of the movie, nothing has changed. He's still a homeless bum with PTSD wandering around the street, and the entire movie feels like a waste of time. Hummingbird set some pretty lofty expectations for itself, and it could have turned a new leaf for Jason Statham, but instead, it just turned out to be a mess. On the one hand, it's a story about a homeless man trying to get his life back together, but it's also about an ex-special ops soldier who's out for revenge, but it's also a whimsical love story between a gangster and a nun. One of these things would have worked well on its own, but throwing them all together was just a wreck. And unfortunately, this movie proves that Statham isn't really a versatile actor. It sucks because it's clear Statham wanted to try something new in his career at this point. During this time, he did this movie and he had a role in the Melissa McCarthy comedy Spy, but it ultimately changed nothing about his career. He ultimately just ended up doing action movies again with Mechanic Resurrection and Furious 7. Before watching Hummingbird, I was really rooting for Satham and hoped he could pull off a good dramatic performance. But now, I honestly hope he doesn't get the chance again. And if he does, hopefully it'll be in a better movie.
Statham may not have the respect his action movie contemporaries do, but playing in awful dramas and subpar comedies is definitely not going to help his image. Personally, I prefer him in action movies even when he's the only good part of the movie. I'd rather see him be the highlight of a bad movie than be a contributing factor to my misery. Action is what he does best, and I think if he keeps doing it for as long as he can, he will become just as celebrated as Tom Cruise or Keanu Reeves. I have high hopes for Hobbs and Shaw, and considering he's worked with Chad Stahelski before, I have my fingers crossed that he'll land a role in the John Wick franchise. It's probably for the best that he sticks to what people know him for, because if Hummingbird is any indication, he wouldn't have a very big career playing in drama movies. I'm Randall the Vandal, and thank you for watching.